Hello and thank you for joining your lady, your girl on Experience Me. Today I have Miss Suzanne Roberts. She is a registered nurse, um, but she's also um, a holistic specialist. She is very heavily into her herbs <laughs> and um, it'll be a very interesting conversation for you to hear. Um, it'll be a, a way for you to awaken your brain health and to just have a better overall health the body if you um, choose to use herbs. Let's get her on the phone right now and hear what she has to say. Hello. Hey, Suzanne, how are you? This is hi. This is your lady, your girl, Naj, calling from Experience Me. You are on my podcast right now. Great. <laughs> how you doing? Great. Okay. Very good. Yeah, what what are you up to this evening? Uh, just uh, reading some reading some books, catching mm-hmm. up on some uh, journals that I haven't had a chance to look at for a while. So okay, what you reading? Yeah. What are you reading tonight? What kind of yeah. journals? <laughs> um, re- <laughs> putting you on the um, spot. One of, one of my holistic nursing uh, magazines. They're talking about a conference coming up and some different things that have occurred within the industry and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, just working on trying to create more, um, mindfulness and nursing. That's one of the things that I was reading about. Um, always working, always, always always thinking about those herbs. (laughs) (laughs) So you, you recently had back surgery. How, how's that coming along? How you feeling? How you moving around? I am I'm a lot better, but recovered and really grateful that I actually had the surgery. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize how long I had been kind of tolerating the symptoms and pushing them down, mm-hmm. putting them in the back of my mind and you know, it's just amazing how much better I felt after surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, and and what was the um, purpose of the surgery? Um, it was correct spinal stenosis, the disfalls and spondylolisthesis mm-hmm. and um, so I had a um, ectomy and uh, what they call it a T-lift um, where they kind of put two screws in your back and line things up and then they also put a spacer like a titanium spacer in between the, the where the disc space should be to maintain that space and they put in some um, bone marrow um, so there's a, some bone transplant, bone grafting that was in there to create a fusion, final fusion. Wow. So, so when you found out, thank you for sharing that. When you found out that you, you know, had to have surgery, one, did you have, did you have to have it? Were you able to make this a decision on your own either way? Or did you, were you like forced to have that surgery? Well, I had been, well, I had developed a relationship with the surgeon so that he could sort of monitor the progression mm-hmm. of my um, back situation mm-hmm. because I was a nurse and I've, you know, gotten numerous injuries. Um, he was pretty much just, he pretty much told me a couple of years ago, he's like, it only takes catching one person that's falling to really push you into the I need surgery category. So, I knew that at some point, given my profession and, um, you know, that it would become necessary. And when I okay. had reached out to him, I didn't realize that it, I had hit that point where he was like, I want you to go to the emergency room, get a CT scan and an MRI. And then it was like, we're doing surgery next week. <laughs> so mm. Was that, like, was that a plan. scary, was that scary for you? Um, Honestly, it was a little bit of a relief because okay. I didn't have to plan for it. You know, if something happens suddenly and you don't have a lot of time to think about it and to create reasons why you shouldn't do it or create reasons why it's too dangerous to do it and then don't show up for the surgery. No, <laughs> I know, know like, right? I'm sure everybody has those sorts of thoughts and feelings. So given that he was so decisive at that moment mm-hmm. when I came in and said, hey, these are some symptoms that I'm having. They're different than before and they're they've gotten a lot worse all of a sudden over the past month um 
you know, once he had done the CT scan of my spine, he discovered that the disc had, uh, the disc bulge had calcified externally. Mm-hmm. And because it had calcified, it was constantly putting pressure on the nerve, putting at risk for permanent nerve damage. To oh, wow. Nerves. Okay. Yeah. That's so, pretty big. Yeah. And the funny thing is, you're not going to know it's calcified unless you have a CT scan. Right. Right. Which is kind of scary for people that have, are having back pain and aren't actually actively being monitored or seen by a spine surgeon yearly or twice a year. Mm-hmm. Um, at what point, you know, do you, you know, cause I, if I wasn't, if I wasn't working with them, I probably, um, wouldn't have had access to, uh, get in with a specialist that quickly, mm-hmm. you know, because he, he was having problems. He got me in in like three days and then, um, I had the CT scan over the weekend and then the surgery was scheduled the following week. So it all happened really fast. Well, that, yeah, like you said, it's a good and a bad thing because <laughs> you, well, yeah. and a good, a good thing in your case, because, um, you didn't have time to like ponder over it. It was kind of like an immediate, uh, situation. So it, knowing that you had the surgery, um, you are also, a supplement and herbs specialist, correct? <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd call myself that. I'd like to be more humble, but I have spent a lot of You are. Time you of you life definitely are. <laughs> teaching out knowledge and information on natural ways of healing, the mm-hmm. body, mind, and spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, and herbalism, using, using things that come from the earth to heal you as well as, you know, orthomolecularly, nutraceuticals, um, what are the, the things that can actually improve or optimize our health? Those things I've been thinking about for a long time. So okay. when it came time for my surgery, I reached out to my uh, naturopath who I had found during COVID uh, online. She's fascinating. Out of uh, Seattle, Washington, mm-hmm. uh, Dr. Jenna White, and she's at seattlehomeopathy.com. She was offering $50 consults for COVID. And, um, and so I had done a consult with her two years ago and I just found her process and her personality so empathetic, Mm -hmm. so kind. And how, how did I just stuck with her for two years? Yeah. So she's been like my provider. I have a session with her every two or three months over Zoom or over Doximity, the HIPAA, you know, platform for telemedicine. And, um, we also text and email. But she's been helpful in guiding me on um, things to consider and supplements to take or homeopathics to try to optimize my own health. Mm -hmm. And how did her counsel help you um, during your surgery or after your surgery, both actually before and after your surgery? Right. Yeah. So she had, that's a great question. She had, uh, she has like a pre-surgical protocol and a post-surgical protocol. Mm-hmm. And one of the things before surgery that I did that I didn't realize how helpful it would be, it was to take homeopathic arnica, um, before surgery, like a high dose uh, homeopathic arnica. Okay. Some of the, some of the, possible. some of these mm-hmm. terms are very unfamiliar to my audience. So if you could just explain that. Sure. So Arnica is, um, I know people have used Arnica gel. It's in Whole Foods and a lot of places. So you can even get it at CVS now. Um, it's, it's Arnica gels and cream, and that's used for bruising and swelling and injuries. It's sort of a, um, a plant that is known for having healing properties for musculoskeletal problems and post-injury issues. Um, using a homeopathic um, sort of works on stimulating your vital force mm-hmm. in relationship to those types of problems, meaning bruising or swelling or injury to the body in any way. So mm-hmm. the idea is to take take a like sort of pre medicate. <laughs> so mm-hmm. the idea is to sort of pre medicate preparing for injury to my body and tissues in surgery. Mm-hmm. And homeopathy homeopathy works sort of like a vibrational remedy mm-hmm. if you look at them objectively or in a like a lab they'll just sort of register as sugar pills right but they have um different there's a there's a sort of like there's a small part of 
to the substance that's infused within the sugar pill um, at levels that may not be able to be detectable. But they there's some there's some evidence that it works. Mm-hmm. I found that at, by taking the arnica before surgery, I took a fairly high dose. I took like a a one million um, and a two hundred. I took the 200 C remedy. I put four drop, four pellets in a bottle of water and I took some sips before I went into surgery. So, and then I had the bottle after I got out of surgery mm-hmm. so that I could continue taking that remedy. Uh, what I found as a result of doing that was I felt a lot stronger after surgery. It was kind of amazing how mm-hmm. much better I felt post surgery than uh, before. I felt stronger. Yeah. So what, when you say stronger, what like where? How? So I felt like my life force was stronger. You know, I felt my vitality was stronger. I felt that um yeah, I felt like the aliveness of my body. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, <laughs> the available energy. It just felt um it was it was very unusual. I would never have thought that I would come out of surgery feeling feeling so good despite, you know, having some pain and discomfort, you know, energetically my I felt very strong. So you thank you. So you've been taking herbal medicine. What about prescription drugs that are prescribed by your doctor post surgery? Um, I did take some you know, I took Tylenol for pain management. I also had um, the, the prescribed because, you know, the nerves are involved whenever you're talking about back or disc issues. Um, you know, cause what they do is a decompression of the nerves by mm-hmm. cutting away part of the bones on the spine or the vertebrae. Mm-hmm. That's considered a decompression. So by decompressing the nerves, you take the pressure off of the nerves so they can be more free and, and not be impinged, which can create... Um, numbness, contractions, burning, sciatica symptoms, etc. So mm-hmm. nerve, you know, so releasing the nerves was really important. But as you're doing that, sometimes it's helpful to have a, a medication like gabapentin that helps to reduce nerve pain mm-hmm. um, while your nerves are, re- are healing and regenerating. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also a homeopathic that acts in the same manner called hypericum, which is homeopathic St. John's work. I also did use that as well. Okay. In addition to the gabapentin. Okay. So you're heavily into herbs. Um, you prefer the the natural route. Is that correct? Versus I prescribed feel, meds? I feel that they're better together. If there's a Western medication that could be helpful, then a lot of times you'll find an herb or supplement that either reduce the side effect or to work synergistically with it mm-hmm. to make it work better in your system. Um, so, or to counteract the side yeah, counteract the side effects, for example. So um like for example, taking Tylenol, right? So that can really lower your glutathione levels in your body. That's something that is um important, you know, works in your liver. So there's research that shows that taking milk thistle, for example, or taking oral glutathione can really take uh, compensate for um, what's happening to your body when, you know, negatively when you're taking Tylenol, mm-hmm. you know, particularly it's- if you're taking larger doses regularly around the clock. Mm-hmm. Um, so it- there's things that can be done. So I, I, I use it sometimes for primary. Mm-hmm. Primary, or I'll try it first to see if the symptoms resolve. Mm-hmm. And um, but I, I'm not against uh, I'm not against using medications um, because medications work immediately, and herbal medicines can take up to six months to work. Okay. Is so that- if you need something immediate, you need a drug. It doesn't mean you're going to be on it for 20 years. Take the drug. <laughs> you, know, mm-hmm. you might be on it for six months. Take your herbal, med- you know, and figure out how to. Yeah. How, with your doctor to figure out how to titrate on or off, you know, depending on what's going on, you may really need to remain on it or, and, or you may find that you can use a lower dose over time because the effects of your other remedies, whether it's herbal or mm. uh, nutritional, um, are working so much better. It's interesting. So. It's interesting to hear you say that you 
um, like to mix them both. Usually people that are more on the herb natural medicine side, um, they do not prefer to mix them. It's usually one or the other. <laughs> now that you, you do have a good point, I, I, um, I think that comes from my early experiences mm-hmm. in the natural medicine industry and in the holistic healthcare. I was doing a lot of energy healing as part of a lot of different communities that were very anti-drug. And for example, one of the ladies that I had worked with had a heart attack and everybody was giving her Reiki and didn't understand chronic healing, which was you can't over energize an organ that's already in distress. You need to clear the energy off, you know, Mm -hmm. instead of putting more energy on it that can create more of a problem, you know, and one of the things my holistic doctor had said, I was seeing um, Dr. Glenn Rossell at the Rossell Center. He's just recently retired. And he said, you know, just because somebody's on a spiritual path doesn't mean that they can't have heart disease. So mm-hmm. he was right. Like, it doesn't have to be, you know, it's not necessarily something that's been cured with energy healing and Reiki. And, and sometimes those things can be used in the wrong way. And anything can have a bad effect. You know, just because you think it's benign doesn't mean it's, it's not actually helping. It's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of examples where I've had friends that, you know, were like, I'm going vegetarian, I'm eating all the spinach and tofu. And, you know, I talked to them about like, well, you got kidney stones. Do you know that these things are making you worse? And <laughs> they were like, oh, wow, I had no idea. And they never had been told about having a low oxalate diet and what what sorts of foods to avoid to prevent the recurrence of kidney stones. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, things can be harmful that are natural and they can be helpful. The, the, the real not, the real issue is getting the best advice from people who will give you good advice. So there's a lot of bad advice givers out there, but you've got to sort of balance them both. And I try to stay in the middle mm-hmm. and look objectively at both sides. Mm-hmm. And I have providers that can help me make those decisions as well, you know, as research. Mm-hmm. So um, everyone, you know, everyone's own health and health choices are very personal and based on their own paradigm. So I'm not one to say one's righter or wronger, but I can tell you things that have happened in my life that have led me to make the decisions that I make now in terms of approaching my health and helping others drive towards on this mm-hmm. journey to get towards greater health. So that's actually a good transition before we actually get into your background and actually what you do um, to service others and educate others on wellness and health. What was your childhood like and why are you so heavily into herbs? I mean, I've been around you and I your entire home is a herb factory (laughs) like it's insane like every single room the closet the bathroom the kitchen the laundry room um inside the fridge probably i don't even know well in some of the (laughs) things necessarily herbs but they're like organic products or natural things or um yeah it's still insane lifestyle is is fairly challenging and Mm -hmm. um you know, and, you know, there's a lot of different types of things that I use, whether it's homeopathic, herbals, herbal tinctures, herbal teas, um, you know, herbs themselves, mm-hmm, uh, or, mm-hmm. or supplements or, or various, you know, blends of herbs and vitamin mixtures. Um, for example, for adrenal health, you know, got some really good products for that. And as people of color, we really need to support our adrenals because the effects of chronic stress are really apparent in our lives mm-hmm. due to racism. And so we always constantly need to support um, certain organs to maintain our, our health you know, and vitality and prevent us from developing chronic diseases or to minimize the impact of chronic diseases and potentially mm-hmm. reverse them. So why the interest of natural medicine herbs? Where did that come from? That's a great question. I um, 
you know, I can honestly say that it probably is due to my parents. <laughs> um, I grew up, my father was a minister, uh, and I grew up visiting, like, from a very young age, maybe six, seven, eight, going to hospitals on Sundays after church and visiting shut-ins in their homes or people acutely ill in hospital rooms and hospital beds. And I honestly think I went to at least six different hospitals in Boston when I was a kid, as well as different nursing homes and, mm. and members' homes, um, trying to minister to them. And, you know, as a kid, you always want to do something to help, and you always want to feel that, you know, what you can do can make a difference. And I feel like at that age, you know, when you're young, you just want to help people or save people. And it didn't seem like the spaces and places that I went into were really conducive for that. Mm -hmm. And I really started questioning alternative forms of healing because I didn't feel that um, there was really a lot of possibility within the places that I was that I had gone to as a, as a kid from that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when I went to college, I had my own challenges and I was looking, I was an art major and I was looking to African art and symbolism uh, and figures like Nikisi figures from Congo, um, power of protection and trying to invoke healing through different objects and, and intention. And so I realized that I really love art, but I also really love the idea of healing or the availability of healing for everybody. And so I believe it sort of converted my interest in art became, turned into healing art. And, um, you know, and I felt that I really needed to start with just looking at what was available where I live in the West when, in America versus looking to another continent and just learning about the different ways people can can work on healing their mind, body, and spirit and become more one. Mm -hmm. uh, That's you know, actually a, a really great transition into your background excuse me, I'm on your website right now, SuzanneRobertsWellness.com. And part of your mission and vision statement is that your organization assists to aid individuals and groups along a path to intelligently navigate their health challenges or goals and increase the education and knowledge of condition and options for treatment to realize goals, satisfaction, or success. You're also a nurse at a hospital that is a 40 bed unit, long-term care unit. Talk to us about that. Yeah. So I, um, I'm newly, a uh, newly minted manager and nurse manager, uh, at a, at a, actually it's a 260 bed facility. And I'm the manager of one of the units, one of the six units in the building. And it's, um, it's a, it's in, it's in the greater Boston area. And it's, you know, I feel like it's a really great environment. People there have worked for a long period of time. They're very committed to their jobs and to the patients. And, you know, they need help navigating a lot of the challenges in the healthcare system. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, one of the biggest problems right now for a lot of the patients is getting to doctor's appointments. Mm -hmm. As you know, transportation is very sketchy, particularly medical transportation. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously um, you don't prescribe herbs to your patients, correct? That's, that's separate from your work work. Oh, right. No, I, I, I don't really prescribe herbs, but you know, my, my nursing job and my holistic nursing job are two very different roles. Mm -hmm. Talk yeah. to us so about your like, holistic job. Yeah, so I have I've had um, clients over the years that consult me on different lifestyle challenges, and a lot of times it's you know I do something called polarity therapy, mm -hmm. which is a form of sort of energetic body work that works on moving energy along different lines. So if you think about energy patterns or, you know, Ayurveda has something called Marma points or the chakras 
or that you might have heard of, or, you know, Eastern medicine, Chinese medicine, you might have heard of acupuncture points. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those are points that have different, um, that are different pathways for energy to move in the body that impact organs or glands okay. and overall health and vitality. So polarity therapy works with different energetic systems in the body using finger pressure, vibration, rocking, et cetera, and through manipulation through cranial sacral system, which feels a little bit like sort of very gentle chiropractic pulling and manipulation. Um, and we work on just bringing people to unblock areas of their body that might be congested and heavy, which then leads to people feeling better in those areas. They might have a relief of pain or relief of stress. And a lot of people say they feel like they went on a vacation for two weeks after being on my table for two hours. No, listen, so, I was just saying to myself that that sounds like it feels really good, <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, yeah, sounds like something I would want to do. Yeah, because I feel like, you know, less is more. A lot of times you can heal yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You might not need an herb or supplement. You know, you may just need to relax. And, you know, just getting out of that sort of chronic stress pattern is very powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, breaking that cycle is huge. A lot of times we do things that prevent ourselves from truly relaxing. Mm-hmm. It's very easy to get caught up watching movies on your iPad or reading novels on your phone. And you might tune into yourself while you're doing that and realize, wow, I haven't really taken a deep breath in like two hours. You know, I haven't really paused. I haven't really checked in what's going on in my body. How am I feeling right now? You know, mm-hmm. how do I break those things and build in better habits or more awareness, more body awareness, more soul awareness. So spirit awareness. Uh, So how would you explain that to someone that you're counseling to better their wellness, not just their body, but their mind as well, their brain health? Well, I believe the body, the mind sort of controls the emotions and the emotions, you know, impact the body very dramatically. And when you can cause the mind to calm down and settle down, you know, the rest of your body kind of follows suit. That's why I believe, you know, there's been such a big emphasis on mindfulness, on acceptance, you know, commitment therapy, on somatic experiencing, some things for chronic stress. Um You know, all of these things really make a big, big difference in people's lives when you can sort of learn how to shift state. You know, sometimes we can do that through prayer, through meditation. It doesn't have to be something fancy and technical. mm -hmm. A lot of people can do it naturally. And a lot of people can guide you towards it naturally. They believe that you just need to be connected, you know, to to God, the universe, yourself, you know, whatever those things are that you believe in your paradigm. Once you're connected to that knowledge and wisdom, it can flow through you naturally. And people have been doing this for thousands of years. Now we're just sort of calling it certain things and right. dividing it to certain categories. But I believe, you know, wisdom's available to all of us as long as we're open and willing and available to receive it. So a lot of it's just like people to experience the polarity session. You know, what is that called? And what did you just say? I'm uh, sorry. Uh, polarity. One of the things that oh, I... Okay. My practice is sort of described heavily on my website mm-hmm. um, because I believe that just getting people out of the stress response, you know, they, you know, there's a book called the relaxation response. You know, that is like a huge thing. You know, remembering that life should be easy, remembering that you should be happy along your path. Some people think, oh, I've got to struggle to be healthy. I've got to work so hard and plan so much and but if you lose the joy of the process you're kind of missing the point exactly exactly i i totally agree with you on that um you know, I, I think that that's why i recommend that yeah that's why i recommend the energetic stuff first to mm-hmm. get yourself in a mindset to be ready to make some changes mm-hmm. you because know, you well, can only sort of make changes when you raise your vibration and you work through some of those things that are sort of creating that knot in your heart or in your stomach 
And once those knots start loosening, then the possibility arises for for self change, self transformation, and so increase your level of health and well being. Mm-hmm. You said the key word um, for another transition that I would love, love to talk about in that is the gut. Um, I'm aware uh, that a lot of issues or most of our issues, uh, diseases, excuse me, diseases um, and different ailments in the body occur in the gut. Could you talk about that? Uh, It's a big topic. (laughs) <laughs> so I, I don't want to minimize our digestion and elimination. You know, we, you know, in the GI system, we, you know, digest, we eliminate, we absorb. Um, and there's interstitium, there's this, you know, the, the endothelial tissue that lines our, our esophagus and our digestive tract and our colon. And, and those barriers can be, um, can be broken or insulted from long-term use of antibiotics and um, antidepressants, different types of drugs and different types of foods can cause those valves over time and um, eventually cause things like leaky gut or ulcers or... Um, What's you know, a leaky gut? Different. Um, <laughs> that is another big topic, but, um, a lot of people have been talking about leaky gut for mm-hmm. a while now. So I'm sure everybody, it was kind of funny. I was talking to my sister the other day, um, and she was like, she was like, Oh, Suzanne, my stomach swells up after I eat food and it didn't happen before. And what do I, what do you think it is? Uh, and I said, well, you know, it could be leaky gut. Like a lot of times you have abdominal pain or minor food sensitivities or bloating or feeling indigestion. Um, you know, all of those things could be um, part of, you know, you know, as I said, you know, just the damaging of your intestinal lining. So you know, wait a minute. Of your so, what, so what you're trying to tell us is that a lot of us are walking around with a leaky gut and we don't even know that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I, th- I think because I a think lot of us have those issues that you just mentioned. Yeah, yeah. So, and again, there's y'all you know, better get go get checked. <laughs> yeah, well, well, there's questionnaires. I I had given you a, like a handout. There's there's some definitely questionnaires that you can do to sort of help determine what part is impaired. Or you can just go on a protocol to improve everything. So mm-hmm. a lot of people have already started doing that in our society. A lot of people are talking about increasing their fiber intake or taking collagen supplements and drinking aloe vera juice and taking probiotics and reducing their alcohol intake. So all of these things, um, you know, reducing the, the like the white flour and the white rice, you know, so. All of those oh, I eliminated that from my diet a long time ago. Yeah. So, you know, the goal is just to cre- increase the amount of good bacteria mm-hmm. in your gut and increase some um, and lower like inflammatory foods that can cause inflammation into the lining of the gut. You know, so some of the foods that people say cause most inflammation as we know, they're like the dirty word of gluten and dairy. You know, so people are like, it's the hardest thing to give up in the world. It's gluten is bread and milk products or mm-hmm. cheese. And um, and those cause the most inflammation to your gut. And, mm-hmm. you know, processed foods as well as that, you know, within that category. Yeah, I, I basically eliminated basically all those things you said. I'm not saying that I completely got, but I barely touch it like maybe once every four months or something like that if I choose to do that but basically I don't I stare especially cheese Mm -hmm. so yeah Yeah, we've talked about that before you've been very you have a very good diet you know the issue is sometimes if you're still having symptoms, even though you're avoiding those things, mm-hmm. that may indicate that there may be some diet damage to the lining or like low good bacteria levels in your tra- GI tract or your enzymes, your stomach enzymes might be a little bit lower. You could benefit from 
having additional support. You know, it might not clinically show up on a blood test per se at a GI office, but you can do your own trial by having some inexpensive digestive enzymes or papaya chewable pills and see if those help you feel better, you know, if you take them before you eat. You know, simple things like um, if you don't want to buy digestive enzymes, people talk about having a little bit of apple cider vinegar, for example, mm-hmm. um, or digestive bitters. You know, we use a lot of use, people are using bitters now in alcoholic drinks. Those are coming back. Those are there's other types of there's certain combinations of bitters that work really well for stomach health. Um, a lot of the Germans have bitters. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things in Europe that are a little different, that are normal there, that are not normal for us over here. So, um, but you taking bitters can be a really good way to help prepare um, and release the enzymes that you need to stimulate them to 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 release them into your system so that you'll be able to digest, assimilate, and absorb your food better. Wow. You give such a good expl- explanation of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I love talking to you about your practice and what what your passion is, what your strong interest is. Mm. Yeah, I really, you know, my goal was really to try to build a bridge between, you know, energetic, you know, the energy world, energy healing world, and and regular people, you know, and, right. and try to help people figure out how to start, you know, de-traumatizing their body. So I, I initially started this pathway when I read um, a book by Queen Asua, who's a African, African-American in Brooklyn, Mm-hmm. who has had a healing center for, I think, probably since the 70s or 80s. And she sort of talked about the need for cleansing, and she did colon hydrotherapy and polarity therapy. And that's sort of how I first was introduced to this back in high school, when I was reading these books in high school and college. And it really, you know... What's the name of the book the, again? Uh, it's called... The book The, the book that I read initially, um, and I'm not sure if it's been revised since okay. then... But it was called Heal Thyself. Mm-hmm. And it's written by someone named Queen Afua, A F U A. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. And she, I believe she still has a center and a spiritual center. Um, and, you know, back in the day, she wasn't really doing a lot of sort of spiritual things. She was more focused on healing. But she created a lot of pride in sort of uh, African um, identity and heritage and and built a very nice uh, community um, supporting practices of healing and using forms of detoxification like uh, colonics and enemas and, um, and using modalities like polarity therapy, gentle uh, forms of healing to really support people in their in their in their practice, and that really influenced me early on. Um, and I felt like, even though I've never met her, I felt that she was sort of a a role model for me as a young woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, growing up, there wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of conversation around these things like there is now. Um, when I was probably in college it was 94 you know people weren't really considered like seriously using like aromatherapy and herbalism so it was different it was a different time oh Um, absolutely definitely from now in 23 yeah Mm, yeah so it was it was definitely it was it was just fascinating to me and i Mm -hmm. I wanted to figure out how to approach it and I sort of did it um, intuitively and um, while I was still trying to establish myself professionally, um, I sort of used my my hobby or my private time, my private life as an opportunity to investigate these other areas of interest. 
Well, it's working out just fine for you. You're very well educated and knowledgeable about your herbs (laughs) specifically (laughs) and your practice. Um, Suzanne, Miss Roberts, uh, thank you so much for being on Experience Me. Um, I really appreciate you being genuine with your conversation. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. I'm grateful that you invited me on your show. And I look forward to having more conversations with you. Absolutely. You can hear or find out more about uh, Suzanne Roberts at Suzanne Roberts Wellness.com. Your lady, your girl is signing off right now, but you'll hear from me soon. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good day.